Hello, my name's Keith Rucker. So today I thought we would do a little video here on uh, getting a milling machine um, dialed in, set up, uh, getting everything trammed out so that it is running perfectly at 90 degrees again. So if you watched my last video that I did, you saw that that we actually had to tilt the head back to 26 degrees uh, to put an edge on some knives that I was making for a uh, piece of uh, woodworking machinery, woodcutting knife for a miter trimmer. And in the process of doing that, I had to really change a lot of stuff about my milling machine as far as it's set up. So we tilted it back or nodded it back. When you Going back and forth this way is called a nod, just like you nod your head uh, up and down, left and right would be more tilt, I guess. So we knotted it back. Uh, I had to move the whole turret back. So we, sl we slid the entire head back uh, in the turret and also had to rotate the entire head a little bit just to get it back far enough. So we made a lot of changes to the settings here. And you know, one thing I'll say is a lot of people that have milling machines, they don't ever want to do these, these, these changes in the setup because they look at getting it all set back to running 90 degrees again, just so difficult. And in reality, it's really not that hard. It's really not that difficult at all. And uh, so don't be afraid to change the settings on your milling machine, but you do need to know how to get everything back running true and square after you do that because 90% or probably 99% of the milling and uses that most people do with a milling machine, milling machine, you want everything running perfectly true at 90 degrees. Uh, I had several comments on my last uh, video that it was refreshing to see someone do something that wasn't square, something that wasn't 90 degrees. So, but now comes the work. We have to get it all set back up. So I thought I'd go through uh, getting everything put back the way it was and get everything set back up to 90 degrees. Uh, and again, uh, if you don't know, this is a Wells Index uh, milling machine. Uh, it's a vertical mill. It's a little bit different than the Bridgeports and the Bridgeport clones that are out there, uh, which is what probably most milling machines are. Uh, but the process and the procedure that I'm going to use is pretty much identical. So even if you have a different type of milling machine, I think you'll be able to see the process that I use and how I get this uh, machine um, put back in at 90 degrees or trammed in is what a lot of people call it, uh, you'll be able to use that same technique on a lot of different types of machines. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually move the entire turret forward. forward. So this whole upper arm is in a dovetailed uh, turret, as they call it, and you can actually slide this whole thing forward and back to adjust where you have the head positioned uh, out over the table. Right now I've got it moved uh, back pretty far and I want to get it moved back uh, oh, probably six or eight inches uh, to get it back where it'll be kind of in the center of the table. And you can adjust this at any time. This is a pretty easy adjustment and one that you can do with really without having to worry about messing up your alignment. So again, don't be afraid. A lot of times I've seen people crank their table and oh, it's not, the, the cutter's not in the right place. No big deal. Just move the cutter. Uh, don't worry so much about moving the table. Uh, move the cutter based on the job that you have. You can even move the cutter within a job. So if you have something on your table and you need to move the, the entire head forward or backward uh, within that job, you can usually do that without changing a lot of your settings uh, fairly easily. So uh, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, this is again on a dovetailed uh, uh, ways in here. First thing you need to do is loosen these bolts up right here and uh, I've already done that and uh, that's just going to uh, release the pressure on this dovetail. That's where you clamp it down. Now on this machine I've got this uh, bolt right here and uh, this is kind of I think on a rack and pinion maybe uh, but when you turn that you see the whole head uh, just moves forward. So we're going to move this back and I can actually just tell on here uh, from the from the dust quite honestly that's on this dovetail where it was set before and where it was set before was pretty good so it was about right there and that's also about where the front of the dovetail is flush here so it can be anywhere on there but that's where I've had it that's where it's been working I'm just going to go ahead and lock it down there once that's done uh, you just tighten these uh, bolts up here and uh, that will lock uh, this in place so that it's not sliding back and forth very easily so the next thing I'm going to do is, is uh, for this job, I needed to, to get it back and it was hitting a beam back here behind it. I don't know if you can see that in the, in the screen. There was a metal beam back here. So I actually had to tilt, or excuse me, rotate the entire head over. Uh, looks like about uh, six and a half degrees uh, to do that. I want to get it back again to 90 degrees uh, or zero on the scale. And there's a scale here 
that shows me and I can tell I'm about six and a half degrees off. So, and again, I just did that because I, I needed it to get it where it needed to be. Don't be afraid to move this thing around. This is just a, uh, you can just move by hand. It's kind of difficult, kind of hard. We'll actually, you know what? These two bolts right here, uh, lock that in place. And there's two more on the other side that I've already loosened up. So now let's try it again. There it goes. And uh, I'm just gonna move this around and I'm just gonna use my scale here. Uh, I'm just gonna put it back on zero and that'll be good enough. And uh, again, we'll lock these bolts down here and uh, I'll go around the other side and lock those down. So this is pretty simple here. Now we've got it back basically like it was uh, before I made my adjustments. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and adjust the knot. And again, I got this set right now on 26 degrees, which is the angle I needed for the knives that I was making before. But we want to get this back down to zero. And uh, we're going to use a method here in a minute to actually get it perfectly tuned in. But for right now, I just want to get it close. And I'm just going to use the scale that's on here. Now, I will caution you that this scale uh, is going to be close, but you can never really count on getting it just exactly right uh, based on the scale even between the uh, just one degree on here uh, is actually can make some big differences when you're trying to get things running perfectly true on the head and and not only that but just the fact that it is a scale it's, it's just not perfect so to adjust the nod uh, what we need to do is we need to again loosen the bolts to tighten everything up there's three right here on this mill there's actually three more on the other side i've already loosened the ones on the other side uh, we'll come in here and uh just loosen these up and uh, at least on one of them I, tr I try to just kind of just snug it I don't want it to where it's just really loose because you get a when you make a movement and the weight on this thing it gets in a certain place it will it'll just kind of move maybe two or three degrees at a time sometimes so I want it to have just a little bit of tension on there not much uh, but enough for us to uh, be able to move it. Now on, on my mill, again this well's index, uh, there's this uh, stud coming out here and this basically comes up and there's a worm gear in here, a big gear, and this is what we can use to actually fine tune and adjust it. So uh, we're going to just take this wrench on here and as you see as I'm turning this, it's moving that around. And right now again all I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to use the scale on here. I'm going to take it to zero and uh, then we'll start doing our measurements to get it trammed in perfectly. All right, that's right on zero right there. And uh, we'll check this in a minute to see where we're actually at. All right, I got you down here now. Hopefully you can uh, see you straight down here. And if, again, I've got this set to zero on my scale here. And you can probably just tell looking in the video, I can tell just looking at it, it is not square. Uh, and again, I'm just going off of my scale up here and it's not squ uh, square. Now, when you're looking at tramming in a milling machine, uh, what a lot of people are going to do is they'll put an indicator on here and sweep that indicator. And that's an excellent method. And I will usually use that if I need to get it really trammed in just absolutely perfect or to double check the method I'm going to show you. But I'm just going to use a square uh, to square it to get this uh, up. I've, I've lowered my quill all the way down. Uh, this is a, a good surface to look at, and uh, I've got just a regular square here. And this is what a lot of people do, or use a combination square. I'll be honest with you though, I don't like using just a regular square to do this. Uh, that square, it's really difficult to get it exactly where you want it on the table. Let me see if I can get some light coming in behind this. So hopefully you can see the light coming in. From that crack maybe that's showing up in there but hopefully you can see the light coming in there uh, in between the two but again i don't like using a regular square what i like to use instead is a cylinder square and uh, this is a tool that tool and die makers used a lot and uh, it looks like this and what i really like about this is that it has a magnetic base and this is a circular uh, column coming up off of there it's exactly uh, one inch in diameter all the way up and down. This is a very precision instrument and uh, it's perfectly at 90 degrees going up and down anywhere along that surface. So instead of using this to, that square, what I'm going to do is take this cylinder square and put up next to it. And I have a much, much better surface to compare against 
and uh, to get this thing lined up. It's amazing to me the how good you can get something square with your eye when you have two uh, perfectly flat surfaces that you're putting next to one another. You can do an excellent job this way and that's the method we're going to do. So give me just a second. I'm going to reposition this light uh, so maybe y'all can see the light in there a little bit better and we'll uh, adjust this in. Alright, I got you zoomed in now where hopefully you can see this a little bit better. So I've got the cylinder square right up against uh, the column here coming out of my quill and it's touching at the very bottom and as you can see as it goes up that gap gets bigger and bigger. So now again I'm going to come up here and use my little uh, adjustment screw. I have uh, snugged up um, the bolts in the head in order to hopefully be able to make some fine adjustments and I'm going to move that out and as I do just using the cross slide on my table I'll move that over and touch off at the bottom and you can see I'm still not quite there so let's uh, adjust it out just a little bit more move that in let's see. that was hitting on the bottom down there I only had to move it up just a touch And I'm getting real close, but I'm not quite there. I've still got a little bit of a gap at the top. Still got just a little bit of a gap. All right. I'm seeing very uniform amount of light going up and down. There's just a tiny, tiny amount coming through there. And that looks to be dead on. And we're going to check this uh, when we get through with the indicator just to see exactly how good we are. Uh, but this is going to be really close. And for most jobs, I would say this is good enough. You know, if you are got to have something just really, really dead on, you may want to get your indicator out and test it. And I'm going to show you how close we are in just a bit. But that's my method uh, that I use. Now, before I take it out of there, though, I am going to Go ahead and tighten up all the bolts all the way around here real good because uh, you can actually um, move it out of adjustment just by tightening these bolts up. And uh, we want to double check after we've gotten everything tight uh, to make sure that that didn't happen. Um, just to make sure we're good. So let's see. All right. And we're still right on the money. So. I'm really not seeing any light come through the top or bottom there, which tells me that that is square uh, on my nod. And as long as we're checking everything out, I'm also going to check the uh, left and right tilt on this by just going 90 degrees on the table and looking over here. And I did not take this out of adjustment uh, when I was changing my setup, uh, but as long as I'm getting everything set up here just right, I wanted to verify that it had not moved since the last time I checked this and I put the cylinder square in there again using the light and uh, as you can see uh, it's dead on. There's no light coming in there at all uh, which again tells me that uh, it's, it's, it's square in both directions. And now comes the moment of truth. This is where we really check it with an indicator and, and I'll just go ahead and say guys the method I just showed using the uh, uh, cylinder square. That's what I use most of the time and it, like I said it's going to get me close enough for the vast majority of the milling that I do. If you need to get this thing dialed in just absolutely perfectly for something take the time and do it with an indicator. So what I've got here this is a stare at last word indicator. You can use any kind of test indicator uh, that you want to and, and I've got this on here where it's uh, coming out about four inches. So I'm measuring about eight inches from one side to the other across this. And uh, just let me explain this too. You know, when we're measuring this, we're measuring it in thousandths of an inch, uh, but you're measuring in thousandths of an inch over an eight inch span. The farther out you go, um, the greater the, um, the error will be uh, in any uh, angle that you have because that angle is the, the, as that angle just a little bit off one side, this end out here is going uphill or downhill. So that, that, uh, that measurement is going to multiply as you go out from one end to the other. So I'm measuring here about eight inches apart. 
you know, if you're using a half inch end mill, you know the measurement from one side to the other side of that end mill will be a, even a smaller fraction of this. About the biggest uh, tool I use on here is that four or five inch uh, shell mill that I was using earlier. So the errors that I'm seeing will actually be greater uh, than what I will, uh, that I'm, the errors that I'm measuring will be greater than what I would actually see. So right now I've got this, I swung this around and I apologize, um, I don't have a mirror. I like to have a mirror I can put back behind here and I can just read that. Um, I'm out here, it's, it's a Sunday afternoon, the mirror's locked up in the office. I can't, don't have a key to get in there right now, I left it at home. So I'm doing this without a mirror. So trust me, I've got this set on zero. I've got around behind it and I've looked at it. And now I'm gonna swing it around to the other side. And, and notice too, I've just got some uh, one, two, three blocks. These are ground precision. Uh, exactly one inch. That just gives me a flat surface to measure off of rather than the table. And uh, I did check these uh, with micrometer to make sure they were the same. And if you look on the indicator, I'm measuring about one thousandth of an inch off on the, the nod going in and out. And uh, again, that's just using the cylinder square. If I want to take the time, now I can sit here and play with this and go back and forth and fine tune this. However, I will warn you that when you start making these adjustments, when they're this close, uh, you can kind of chase your tail a little bit trying to get it just dead on. With some time and with some practice, it can be done. Uh, but you can chase your tail a little bit because again, uh, you're, ha you're moving it just such a tiny fraction, but because you're going out, uh, you're measuring eight inches apart on that angle, uh, the, the error again is being compounded. So anyway, that's the procedure to do and I, I checked that. So, and then the next thing I want to do is check my side to side. So I'll come over here same thing, I'll put a, a block here and I will swing my indicator around over here and um, it should be reading zero all the way around. And I read the other side, it was right on zero. So on my, on my tilt left and right, I'm somewhere between a half a thousandth and a thousandth out. Just trust me on that. It's gonna take more time to move the camera around to show you. But using that cylinder square, I'm able to get it really close. Is it dead nuts perfect? Well, there's still a little bit of room for, uh, for improvement. But again, for the vast majority of the milling that I'm doing, the uh, cylinder square is a quick, easy way of being able to set this milling machine up that's going to be adequate for the vast majority of the jobs that you'll do on it. And while I'm talking about this, I also want to just mention uh, something about this particular milling machine. So this is a Wells Index uh, Model 847 uh, milling machine. I just double checked because I always can't remember that number. But it's a Model 847 Wells Index. And uh, I did a video before kind of comparing this one to the Bridgeport. And again, I'm by no means uh, knocking a Bridgeport milling machine because they make an excellent milling machine. It's, it's considered the standard, I think, in the industry. But there are a lot of things about this Wells Index machine that I think is maybe a slight improvement over the bridge port. And uh, the way this, the head on this mill is set up is another example of why I like this a little bit better than the bridge port. So on a bridge port, uh, your left and right adjustment is, is done on the kind of front of the machine and it's, it pivots right here on the axis that it's on. But the nod, the going uh, in and out, uh, instead of pivoting right here in the center of the head, the pivot point is back here. So when you adjust it up and down, if you're using the method with the dial indicator uh, and you, you see you're off a thousandth of an inch one with the other, with, with it being right in the center, all you have to do is, is just look at that indicator and adjust half of that air out and you should be right on. But because the pivot point is back here on a bridge port, that method doesn't work. It works fine on the left and right, but when you start working on there, it's, it, you, you get into a situation where there's some trial and error in getting it set just right. With this Wells Index head, everything pivots right in the center of the head, both the left and right and the nod. And uh, again, it's just a small difference, but in my opinion, when you're tramming in a head uh, and you're using the indicator method, that is a, a definite advantage of this Wells Index machine over the bridge port. So there you go, my quick, simple, easy way to tram in a milling machine head. Again, uh, you know, you can do this with just a regular machinist square, uh, but if you really want to do it and make it easy, invest in a good uh, magnetic uh, cylinder square uh, such as this one. 
um, again, you know, when this gets on the table, it's it's pretty secure. Yeah, I can slide it around, but it takes some force to do that. With this one here, there's no magnet holding it in place. And uh, and also, as this square just turns from one side to the other, you're not getting, you're not reading flush up against there because this is a cylinder and it's another cylinder. Anywhere you put it around there, you're going to have a perfect uh, joint between the two. This is a much, much better tool uh, for doing this with because of the magnetic base and because you're using a cylinder against a cylinder rather than a cylinder against a flat surface. Uh, but again, without the cylinder square, in a pinch you can use just a regular square. I don't think you'll get quite the same level of accuracy that I get with the cylinder square though. A, a good investment for you guys that may already have one. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching and a thank you to my many subscribers who subscribe to my channel.